This particular study, just by virtue of you know how we designed it, and it's a, the Pack Health, the coaching company that's actually running the coaching. It is reserved for patients receiving an isatuximab or a sarcleza based regimen. Um, it's. Uh, it's an evolving answer. I think that the, um, so the two options here, as you know, are daratumumab or Darzalex and isatuximab or, or sarcleza. Um, isatuximab, when it's given IV, does have a shorter infusion time compared to IV daratumumab, but there is the Darzalex FastPro, the subcutaneous formulation of daratumumab, which is obviously much more convenient for patients as opposed to having a, you know, even a 75 minute IV infusion of isatuximab. Now it's a five minute injection of subcutaneous daratumumab plus or minus the monitoring thereafter. Um, I think where things get a little bit more interesting is one, cost reasons, and two, when someone's receiving another IV regimen as well. So, you know, if you look at the studies of a CD38 monoclonal antibody in combination with carfilzomib, which is also given IV, you have the CANDOR study of DARA-KD and the IKEMA study of ISA-KD. Um, I have had some patients where they say, look, I have a port. If I have to come in anyways for IV you know, um, carfilzomib, I don't mind sticking around and having IV X run afterwards, in this case, IV sarcleza or isotuximab. So that's one consideration that goes into it. Um, some financial considerations do go into it. So you know, at my center, we're lucky that we have both as options for our patients to kind of discuss with them. Um, I know some centers that only use daratumumab or only use isotuximab for formulary reasons. I think there will never uh, in the next decade be a head-to-head -head trial of these two CD38 monoclonals against each other. Um, you know, I think certainly if you look at the numbers themselves, which we're not supposed to do, Ikema, patients in Ikema with isatuximab KD did have a longer PFS than those on the CANDOR study of DARA KD. But it's important to remember that the control arm in both studies, you know, the, the KD arm actually in ISA KD and Ikema actually did better than the corresponding KD control arm in CANDOR, meaning that Ikema just all the patients kind of did better, which may be a function of you know, the patient selection or just that it was a slightly newer study and we're just getting better and better at treating myeloma. So in terms of efficacy between them, I do think that they're somewhat comparable. I do think that patient convenience does generally favor DARA, at least because the subcutaneous formulation of DARA is available. But again, I've had some patients up to DARA who, again, just don't like the injections and want to go to IV DARA. And similarly, I've had some patients who if they're getting something else IV anyways, they'd rather just get everything through their port or whatever access they have. And so it, it does still, I think, in my mind, remain a discussion point to have with patients each time because every patient's different. Generally speaking, for both CD38s, isotuximab and daratumumab, they primarily have been used in the refractory setting. That is changing. So, for example, you know the Griffin study is the most recent one eligible, uh, relevant to you know U.S. Uh, or American viewers, but there's similar ones elsewhere of Dara VRD versus VRD in the frontline transplant eligible setting. Isotuximab does have similar studies that are kind of ongoing in there. Kind of newer studies, the GMJ GHD7 is an example of it. Um, I think we'll see. I think theoretically, you know, if you talked to me five years ago about this, I would have really spent a lot of time talking about isatuximab has a different mechanism of action. You know, it kind of more uh, directly binds CD38, more direct set of toxicity to the cells, per, perhaps less of a way for plasma cells and myeloma cells to evolve resistance to it. Clinically, I think they are somewhat interchangeable in my mind. So I think in terms of where ISA versus DARA fit in the frontline setting, I think it's the same concept to where they fit in the real refractory setting, which is it comes down to, in my mind, kind of patient convenience, insurance factors, and, and kind of the logistics of healthcare that make me decide between one or the other.